Federation. And the leaders, the leaders share the same background. The leaders were either people who came from, people who emerged from the middle class, influenced by the whites. A lot of them had um, white ancestry. Even their grandparents or one of their parents were, were white and so forth. So they had similar background. They emerged through achievement, got education, and moved up into the middle class, and from the middle class into the upper class of the society now, and started taking on political ideologies, and were pushing for self-government and independence. So we had, sim we had similar leaders with similar thoughts. And you can see today, most of our leaders in the Caribbean today, except for one and two, we're not calling any names. But most of them went to the University of the West Indies and that is where they were educated. If you should go there and look at the halls, where they write down, you'll see their names there. That is why they may the same way. And that is why most Caribbean countries are not going anywhere fast. Good? So, they, so that commonality, that similarity exists there when it comes down to our leaders and their thought processes. And we know the ones that did not go, but let it stay. Now, what were some of the achievements of the Federation? These were some of them. And we have been speaking about self-government and independence um, so much that it should be ringing in your ears now. There should be a bullet at each of, the, of, of those but it is done, right? Now the first one, I'll go to them then. The first achievement was that the Federation facilitated the movement from colonialism to independence. It was like a transitional period there. Just as though apprenticeship was a transitional period between slavery and full freedom, the Federation was that transitional period between colonialism and the independence. So it facilitated, it was like a bridge. That you move over from colonialism, you walk across that bridge and you go into independence. So that was one of the first achievements of, main achievements of the Federation. A second achievement of the Federation was that it brought together these smaller states and made them more effective in dealing with international bodies and larger countries. Coming together of smaller states made and should be made them are, are made their effectiveness in dealing with international bodies stronger. Strength that. Good? Now, this is how this would work. Just imagine if Jamaica was selling some sugar to the United States of America back then in 1958. And Jamaica was saying, listen, I'm going to sell my sugar to you for ten dollars per pound. But you have said, no, I'm not buy it from you. But I, I want, I'm going to buy it from you for five dollars per pound. And Jamaica is insisting a ten dollar more for my sugar. Now you have to do this, all right, keep your sugar. Me can go buy it from Barbados or Grenada for a cheaper price and so forth. So Jamaica would not have much negotiating power with the United States of America. But when all of these countries are under one government now, obviously all of them would be selling their sugar for the same price. So if you just come to Jamaica and say, I want sugar and Jamaica say ten dollar pound, and you say no, I'm not buy it, now go buy it us, they'll hear the same thing. They'll hear the same thing. In such a situation, they can't run away and say, all right, go with your idiot sugar. I'm not going to buy it from Barbados. No, it wouldn't work. Because it would be one price. Because it was a confederate. All of them would agree on the same thing. Now, if you can't get any sugar from Jamaica, and she turns to Barbados and I can't get it, and she can't get it from no one else, then it would force her to say, all right, I'm going to have to concede. Let us negotiate and say we can get it for $8 a pound or something of the sort. Because you know the term, there is strength in numbers. There is strength in numbers. One or two you can't beat up your teacher. <laughs> <laughs> All right? But 
like in my second entire class or maybe entire grade 9 to meet up one teacher or something of the sort. Alright, good. So there is strength in numbers. There is indeed strength in numbers. I don't know, sounds bad. I'm not going to ask me if I saw me things, I don't have plans. Just check it. Um, another, another benefit, another achievement of the, was of the Federation was that it established a technical school in the Leeward Islands. They established a technical school to teach people some amount of skill training. Among the, the skills that they taught them were things like engineering and agriculture, agronomy and a lot of other science and so forth. That was some of the, the, the things that, that that school did. They implemented programs that were suited for development of these regions. And this was good because to get an engineer, normally you'd have to go out of the Caribbean and more than likely it would be somebody with a white skin, what we call white. But when they could train, for example, engineers, architects, um, good carpenters and builders and mechanics and so forth, then it made human resources more available, skill resources more available, technical resources available to the Caribbean countries. Also, it brought about some degree of freedom of movement. Now, freedom of movement is a big thing and it is causing problems today. Now, freedom of movement means that Whenever you are a part of a group of countries, you should be able to move freely. So with the West Indian Federation, you could move freely without restriction, much restriction, to any one of these 10 member countries. You could do that. Just as always, like what is happening today with the CSME, all you need is a CARICOM passport, no visa requirement. As long as you can prove that, you will be contributing to the place to which you are going, then they will not prevent you. It's not like when you go to the US Embassy and they decide from in the morning or maybe the day before that, all right, I take five some money today and I eat that. No. As is the case with the CSME now, and as was the case with the West Indian Federation, there was freedom of movement where any skilled and qualified persons could move freely to any one of these said countries and find jobs. This, however, was going to become one of the reasons for the failure also, which you'll look at later. It also brought about some level of economic integration. Now, how this work? Now, instead of Jamaica using a ship to sell all its sugar to Britain, and Grenada doing the same thing, and them so small and them can't afford that ship anyways, and all of these other countries, what they did, they pooled their resources, and so what you had forming was this organization known as the RSS, the Regional Shipping System. Today it's not anymore. RSS today means Regional Security System. But they had a regional shipping system that was responsible to take care of the transportation needs of the member countries of the West Indian Federation. So instead of 10 different countries using 10 different ships and paying 10 different transportation costs to sell sugar to Britain, you had both one or two ships doing so, and so you save on transportation costs, you, sh you save on personnel who will be working on the ship, and so it leads to savings overall. So there are some amount of economic integration. They cooperated when it comes on to um, trading and economy. Different countries used to trade with each other. So instead of going all the way to England to buy something, maybe Jamaica had it and she could sell it to our member countries and it made trading easier. This was the basis, or this is the basis upon which the CSME now operates. This is where the idea started. Another achievement of it was that more talented West Indians they got a share in government. Got a share in government, more talented West Indians. Now prior to this, 
prior to this, prior to the West Indian Federation, no West Indian, or very few of them, were able to participate in government at the highest level. It was still the British officials who were running things in all of these British colonies. They represented Britain, they were the governors, they were the highest authority in the island. However, things changed. Our leaders now became premiers. That's the title they give to them before they become prime minister. Premier, the leader of a country that is not yet independent. So, Norman Manley was our premier. Um, Eric Williams was our premier. Grantley Adams was our premier. So we see our own people now taking the lead in politics of the region. So it gave them, the talented people that we have, our bright people, they got to share the government, helping with our development. Because Brit just sent rulers who, not, who did not care much about us enough. They didn't care about us. We would care more about our people than would or than should someone from abroad. The incident of the Marbury Rebellion is just an indication to show you that these persons who came from Britain to rule over these colonies, they did not care about us. Remember what Governor here did to Paul Bogle and all the people there walked with him all the way from St. Thomas to Spanish Town. He, he, he did not even came out on the balcony to say, yeah, hey, all right, Mr. Uno, we can't talk to Uno today. We're going to come back on next day. Not even that. When they came to complain about the bad conditions and the bad treatment they, that they got. And later on, when they started revolting and demonstrating and the rebellion occurred, Governor was the same one who sent the soldiers to shoot down our pregnant women up there in Moran Bay. So that should show you that these British individuals, they were unsympathetic toward the cause of West Indian people. They did not care about us much. And so now our people get a chance to participate in government and they should care more about us than people came coming from Britain. And also another benefit was that when it came on to administration, we saved a lot. Save a lot. Because every time these countries needed something, then they would have to send to Britain to get administrators and officials to get and professionals to get it done. But now we had our own system. So we didn't have to go run to Britain for everything. And so it saved us all of that money. All of that money. So we say when it came on to administrative costs also. Now, why the Federation failed? I mentioned some of the reasons earlier. Mentioned some of them earlier. One, West Indian population, West Indian masses, they were, for the most part, lacking knowledge about the importance of the Federation. They did not understand what a Federation was and the benefits that they could gain from it in the long term. I'm a top of, we are still not learning that as a people. We just like to do things that we get immediate benefits from. So they were not knowledgeable about it. And we can understand. We're talking about a period when the literacy rate in the Caribbean among West Indian countries was maybe about 20%. Where for every one of the people say maybe a 20 of them can read good. You never know, had stuff that you guys have today. There was no internet. There was no telephones for the most part in the Caribbean. There, was, there were no planes and so forth. Shipping was the, the main, ship was the main means of, of, of transportation and communication. And we'll look at that later on. Newspaper was not as available. Very few people had the opportunity to go to school. So they did not gain the knowledge that they should have about the Federation. And so 
when especially Jamaicans get a chance to vote whether or not they should stay in the federation they quickly run it away was a lack of knowledge on the part of the West Indian people that was one of the reasons for the failure of the federation and we can't really blame them, they never know about it or the benefits to be gained from it and it's happened right across the Caribbean another reason why it failed was inefficient communication systems among small islands all of these islands are small, all of them, even Jamaica and we had inefficient communication system. Now, look how far Jamaica was from the rest of them. Let's say you want to get a message down here to Barbados. You'd have to go on a ship and travel all the way down there. You could not check the phone and call down there. Or you might have to write a letter and send it down there. So it took a long time. It took a long time. In addition, there is no way to broadcast, broadcast information on, as I said before, no internet, no television, and so forth. So information did not get to the people as frequently as it should. And so communication became a problem. And whenever people doing things on your behalf, and they're not communicating with you, immediately start to mistrust them, you know? because you don't know really what they're up to and that is why a lot of persons a lot of persons within the West Indies did not appreciate the Federation as they should have because communication was lacking communication was lacking just to show you how distance and communication would have been a problem with for example Jamaica and the rest of them um, up until recently, a lot of persons going to Trinidad or anywhere in the Eastern Caribbean, the easiest, well not the easiest, but the way to go was to take a plane from here, the plane go to Miami and then go back down there. Don't make much sense. But because you don't have so much people traveling from Jamaica down to these places, we don't want to go down there. We don't want to go to Canada and US and wherever else. Right? So you have a lot of people traveling to these places and so forth. So even today, communication um, and transportation is an hindrance to development and to integration when we think about the CSME and CARICOM. Another reason for the failure of the Federation was envy and jealousy among the member states due to differences in economic development. Jamaica, Trinidad and Barbados, they were economically more developed than the rest of these places. Trinidad had oil, petroleum, Jamaica had bauxite, and Barbados always had a whole lot of rich people from England. <laughs> yeah, it is called Little England. That's what they call it. And we can understand this is from a long time. The whites that settled in Barbados, they saw Barbados as their home. So they built up Barbados because they lived there. That was their home. Unlike the whites in Jamaica, when slavery was um, abolished and emancipation came, most of them packed up their bags and go back to, to England and carry all of the money that they, they made after exploiting our resources. So from then on, Barbados had some amount of economic advantage um, when it came on to comparing them with the other countries in the Eastern Caribbean there. So Jamaica had bauxite, tourism it just, was just coming on, Trinidad had petroleum, and Barbados, as we said before, had some amount of, of money. So these smaller countries now, it is said that they were jealous of Barbados, Trinidad, and Jamaica. I don't really think they're jealous of Jamaica anymore. Um, maybe Trinidad, because they are boys. All right, and Barbados is the only developed country in the Caribbean um, today. So they were jealous because they pretty much had no resources. And so this was a reason given by historians as to why the Federation did not last. And you know what them said about jealousy, said worse than bad man, something like so. All right, whenever you have jealousy, you're not going to have unity. And so it led to the demise of the 
Federation. Um, you Georgians at the front, you sound like you have some questions to ask, right? You do? No, I thought I was here, you know, um, every so often. Um, another reason for its failure was the distrust by the smaller states of the larger states. Now, these small islands, they thought that, and it was indeed the case, Barbados, Trinidad, and Jamaica, they had almost all the power within the Federation. They had all the talk, they had all the say, because they had all the money. And so they dictated to these other smaller countries. For example, when it came on to the federal government, Jamaica, Barbados, and Trinidad had a lot of votes. While all of these countries, they only were able to have one on the vote because they were so small and didn't have much influence. And that wasn't good for them. And so they mistrusted, mistrusted these larger countries. They thought that these larger countries were benefiting from them, using them as gains, just as our Britain was using all these countries at, at one time. And so distrust became a major problem, especially when it came on to proposals for the Constitution for the Federation. Almost all the laws and ideas for the Federation came from Jamaica, Trinidad, and Barbados. And these smaller islands, they were pretty much seen as peripheral, peripheral islands and they were relegated to some amount of insignificance. And that led to problems there with the Federation. Now, in addition to that, the larger islands had less to gain from a federation. And so it was felt that these smaller islands were delaying their development. As a matter of fact, um, I was reading an excerpt from one of these old papers, newspaper on the federation then. And one of these, I think it was in Barbados, they referred to these other small islands as parasites. And you know what a parasite does? live off something or someone and the person or something on which they are existing do not benefit at all from them being there. Now, when it comes on, came on to this, for example, Jamaica paid most of the taxes of the Federation and made most of the contribution to it. Barbados and Trinidad also. These small islands are pretty much had very little to contribute to the Federation economically. And so they were saying that these small islands, they are retarding their development. Now one of the big ways by which this happened was that Jamaica, or Jamaicans, Bayesians, and Trinidadians, they were losing jobs because of the free movement that we spoke um, to earlier. Because people from all of these other countries could move freely. They were going over there, and working for less and taking the jobs of the Jamaicans and the people from Trinidad and so forth. And you can understand, if you are a business personnel and you can find somebody who is willing to take $5 per day from another country who can move freely to your country, why, why, why are you going to pay somebody from your country $10 to do the same job? So they came and they were willing to work cheaper than the Jamaicans and the Asians and the Trinidad. And so they got a lot of the jobs that Jamaicans should have gotten. And so Jamaicans and Trinidad and the Asians, they started complaining that they were losing jobs. And matter of fact, job was not even enough in those days that they were losing employment um, to these people. And so animosity started to develop between the countries as a result of that. As a matter of fact, that is still a problem today. Because especially Barbados are complaining that the Guyanese are coming over there and taking away their jobs because they tend to pay them less and so forth. And that is a challenge to the CSME. Those of you who are doing social studies will benefit from, from that information. Another challenge that led to the failure of the Federation was the was that a smaller island that, that should not be um, overrepresented, should be underrepresented. The smaller islands were underrepresented 
in the federal government, underrepresented. While Jamaica and Barbados and Trinidad have a lot of people in it, they are only allowed a few. In addition, the British government wanted to transfer all the debts owed by the smaller islands to Jamaica, Barbados and Trinidad. So all that money that these smaller islands owed to Britain, Britain are saying that, listen, Barbados, Jamaica and Trinidad who don't have to go pay for them. And you know how that got already. These three countries, they were reluctant to. They did not want to pay the debt of these smaller countries. And so that became a problem also. In addition, the federal government did not have enough money. So there's inadequate revenue. And you know what revenue is, right? All the money made by a government that they use to spend in the country for its development. And so we're saying that they, these 10 countries, they did not have enough money to carry out the affairs of the nation. They didn't have enough money for education, for health, for school, to provide jobs, to provide basic amenities, to provide food. And we can understand why, because they lacked resources big time. And so they were always indebted. And so the Federation blocked revenue. And so Jamaica, Trinidad, and Barbados say that it was a burden on them economically. So it is best if we don't have no more federation. In addition, the federation was weak. It was indeed weak. Because most of these countries, Barbados, Trinidad, and Jamaica, these three countries, they were powerful. They had more power than the Federation itself. And that normally happened to a group. They, they, they have to say that two bull can rain in one pen, right? That's the truth. Anywhere you have a group and you have more than one person who want to become the leader and so forth, you always find the group splitting up. Two down can exist in one community. All right? You must have one done or one vice done or something. <laughs> um, but it don't work. Good? But that was a problem. Jamaica always had one of the strongest voices and they tended in those ways to do as they please, like what Trinidad and Barbados. So they themselves were stronger than the Federation. So the Federation was weak while they had entities within it that was indeed very, very strong. Also, Jamaica and Trinidad, they were at loggerheads. 